and welcome to Goose's Disney Pod. You've reached uh, week three of our Spider-Man season and our final episode, John Trumbull. It's Spider-Man, the Dragon's Challenge. But before we get into that, John, how was your week? Oh, it, it was pretty good. It was all right. How, how are you doing? Oh, good. I, I went to see wrestling. I did. I did. A oh, I saw that on Twitter. You were posting a lot last night. How was that? It was good. It was at Arthur Ashe. I've never been there before. Um, it was very comfortable. The seats are much more comfortable than MSG or Barclays. Sometimes, like you really feel squeezed in in those. But uh, at Arthur Ashe, I was very comfortable the whole night, and there were people on top of me. It was a little weird because we're still in a pandemic, and mm-hmm. I have a bunch of fat nerds uh, literally breathing down my neck. Like, <laughs> and... but other than that, other than potentially getting the fatal virus. Yeah, I, it was good. I, it's every now and then I'm like, how is this happening? How is how is the government in the world allowing this to happen? Like, like this this really shouldn't be happening, but it's happening. It, I don't know. It's like 18 that. months. It's like, how do we not have a handle? 18 months. We have we have vaccines, and we still somehow don't have a handle on this. Our handle is just ignore it, and hopefully, no one you love dies. That that's the handle the government has. You know what I mean? Yeah. By the way, I just saw your dog in the background, and he's adorable. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he's having a good time. Um, she, well, she's having a good time. They're both girls. Um, but yeah, it's just it was good. But I'll just say this: if I don't if I don't get COVID after yesterday, I'm just never getting COVID. I guess I'm gonna, I'm an immortal. I'm a vampire <laughs> or something. So. Well, I'm sure that I'm sure that won't uh, come back and bite you in the ass at all. Well, you know, I have the vaccine. You know, that's so funny because like they have to check your card, and it's in my phone. I finally gave it its own album because. Right. In the camera album on my phone, but I take so many pictures of shit. Oh, yeah. Phone. Yeah. So I was scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Give me a second. And she goes, No, it's okay. I believe you. And she kept walking. <laughs> and it's like, I, they're not really doing a great job of checking the cards. But also, no, it doesn't sound like it. <laughs> but, but also, these people, like, these are like basically like people that work at these arenas. They're not the healthcare police. They're not. See, yeah. I did work the podium at Caroline's Pro as the manager um, when I started there. And I got to tell you, if they asked me to do this, I probably would have quit. Because what happens if you find someone who's like, I don't have the vaccine and I'm not leaving? Now it's yeah. your responsibility to like fight this person. It's like, I almost feel like they should have like, I don't know, like a healthcare task force. Now I'm, now I'm getting into like, that's fascist. But like, a, like it, why it shouldn't be on hostesses and like arena workers. Yeah, yeah, exactly enforcement because what could they really do if you if you don't have the vaccine what could they really do so what uh, um but let's get into another topic i want to talk about this week uh this is breaking uh apparently people in marvel feel the title x-men is not inclusive enough and i guess people on twitter are having a meltdown and then there's people that on twitter that are defending people that are having a meltdown and, and or, or going against people having a meltdown uh what is your take on the title of x-men um it's it's fine it's been around for like nearly 60 years and men is obviously referring you know using being used in the general sense mm-hmm. like they they had a woman on the team from day one so it's fine and in my opinion it'd be dumb to change it just because it's such a known property name it, it would be horrible to change it. I'm going to give you a little uh, conspiracy theory here. Not a conspiracy theory, but just a theory in general. I don't think the higher-ups at Disney like X-Men. I don't think they... I think they like Deadpool. They don't like X-Men. I don't think they feel the X-Men is really theirs, even though they own it. But because of the Fox situation, I don't really think they feel any love or 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 any, like, getting of the X-Men. I think they would rather push Shang-Chi and they'd rather push the Eternals than the X-Men. I don't think they get them. I don't think they want to get them. I think also incorporating uh, the, their saga into the MCU is going to be really hard and complicated. What's your? I, I get the sense that they actually don't want to do something with the X-Men. What's your take on that? Um, I can I can see a little of that. I mean, I re- I still remember when Marvel was consciously. Uh, de-emphasizing the X-Men and mutants in general and the Fantastic Four when they were owned by other uh, movie studios Mm -hmm. or when other movie studios had the rights to them. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, it would be a bit of an uphill battle to introduce new versions of them and incorporate them smoothly into the MCU. 
I, I think the characters probably still need a bit of a rest before mm -hmm. the, we introduce another live action version of them. Um, but I think they can still do it. I mean, but yeah, Fox was pretty successful with making movies out of the X Men, and they weren't even that good of movies. They still made a bazillion. Dollars. They were very hit and miss. Yeah, I mean, they made some good ones. They made some bad ones. I haven't even seen the last few. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'd lo I'd love to see a new version that I could be like, oh yes, and I mean that's certainly possible because like when they reintroduced Spider Man in Civil War. We weren't that far removed from the Andrew Garfield era, but they really made Spider-Man feel fresh again. I thought. Well, I think let's say you let's say when they go, we go to see Eternals, right? We go mm -hmm. and, and in the then they let's say this is a big shock. A Professor X shows up, and it's a different actor, but they just nail the tone, and it's just the tone of the classic Xavier. I think people would accept it within seconds. Like, yeah. When, the actor is playing him let's say they get a new actor i think people love these characters so much and they work so well that you, i think you're right i think it doesn't matter how close the last few movies are if you put in the right version of these characters in the movies people will accept them right away they yeah want, absolutely want the yeah absolutely i mean like as i will always remember seeing captain america civil war and you know i remember one the cheer that went up in the theater when they just put queens on the screen because yeah. the audience that was in the know knew that we were about to get to Spider-Man and we were going to see it and they were excited for it. They were primed for it. And Tom Holland was so good and he nailed it right from the start. And they really made Spider-Man feel fresh again because he was just, he looked great and he was, he was doing Spider-Man type stunts and he was, he, he was like a motor mouth. He never shut up and he was making jokes and it really felt like Spider-Man. Can I tell you the moment with Spider-Man in that movie that, like, I think is my favorite uh, cinema Spider-Man uh, moment um, What's that? is when he's fighting Winter Soldier and Falcon and he just grabs Winter Soldier's arm. He goes, uh -huh. wow, this arm is really uh, impressive. He starts make cracking and Winter Soldier's looking at him like, how the fuck did this guy just grab my arm? Right. And to me, that's such Spider-Man because it's like this guy is so strong and so good. He doesn't even know it. And he's cracking jokes. And it's it was such a perfect Spider-Man scene. You know, mm -hmm. like a perfect, like almost out of a 70s Marvel team up. Yeah, yeah. And I liked when he was fighting Captain America and he was like, wow, that thing doesn't obey any of the laws of physics. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, that's one, that's that's both something that like Spider-Man would say. And, and two, it's like, it's fun because it's Marvel poking a little fun at themselves. Yeah, no, and um, yeah, I, I loved it. And, you know, my thing, my other thing is this, is that like if the X-Men like, those X Men movies, like X Men X Two, is not bad, but the original X Men mm -hmm. two thousand, not not good, does not hold up. I think time's passed it by a little bit. Yeah, I, I yeah. think it was good for its time. That was what you know like what 2000? even at, yeah, to even at its time, I really I, I didn't really enjoy it. Um, I'll say this: if they had put the care, and let's say Marvel had the rights to X Men the entire time, right? Mm -hmm. And they put the care and love into the X Men that they did Iron Man. Let's say they, they started with the X-Men instead of Iron Man or, and the Avengers and Thor. I don't think we ever would have got to Shang-Chi or even Guardians of the Galaxy. I think right now we'd be seeing Gambit 4 and um, Bishop 7 because those characters are so good that like the X-Men characters are such good characters and there's so much to mine from. And, you know, I know people like the Shang Chi film, but his character—he doesn't have—he doesn't have one percent of the character like Sunfire has. And Sunfire is a barely used X Men character, but they're so fleshed out and they're so good that I just think if the X Men had been done right, all you would have had was X Men movies in the MCU because they're mm -hmm. just—I think people will really respond to them. And um, I—I I mean, there's a reason why that was the number one selling comic book for almost thirty years. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. How do you, what do you feel about the X Men? Um, well, I can't. I can't compare it to Shang Chi because I still haven't seen the oh. Shang Chi movie. I think I'm going to wait till streaming for that one. I'll tell you um, the thing with Shang Chi. It's the first Marvel film that felt more like a Disney film than a Marvel film. Ah, it didn't really feel like it was taken from the comic. It was like we're going to take this guy's name. And we're basically going to make a movie we, we want to make, but there's really not a lot from the comic. That's what I understand. I understand it is a bit removed from what the comic was. And I'm, I'm sure part of that is because they wanted to get away from the, the Fu Manchu part of it. Mm -hmm. And from maybe the, some of the racial aspects that might not have dated so well. 
Um, so I don't know, but I mean, uh, yeah, if, if Marvel had been in charge of producing the X-Men movies from the start and if they had the, the infrastructure in place to do that, like they um, did with Iron Man, yeah. Yeah. I, I think they would have done a nice job with it and it, yeah. it would be interesting to see what sort of differences we'd, we'd get. Cause I know that like Kevin Feige consulted on a lot of those films and sometimes they listened to him. Sometimes they didn't. I know yeah. well, I think also, the whole I mean, Sony email hack. Uh, one of the things that was leaked was uh, Kevin Feige's uh, notes on the amazing Spider-Man too. Mm-hmm. And he was basically like, we've got too many plot lines. And I mean, it was like all the criticisms that the, uh, the critics had for that movie. And yeah. so like, I mean, Kevin Feige knows what he's doing and he knows how to make a good movie. Yeah. I, I, I just, I don't know why I have this theory that they've soured on the X-Men as a company. And um, maybe, I mean, I, my gut feeling is, is still they're just giving them a rest. I'd like to see them uh, just kind of get away from the, the Fox model a little bit. Yeah. Like they're probably not going to do this, but I'd love to see them this time cast Wolverine with a short, more unusual looking guy rather than, you know, big six foot three handsome dude like Hugh Jackman was. That that would be great. Um, that would be great. They're probably not going to do that because that's, they're probably going to emphasize Wolverine and that's going to be the star role. Yeah, see, I think you could cast, like, I think, you know who they should really emphasize? Um, I think it's Cyclops. I think Cyclops could- I agree, 100%. A yeah. great film character. Like, I think he would take off like Cap has or Star-Lord. Yeah, I mean, uh, Cyclops, he's, I mean, if you're doing him right, he's like Mr. X-Men. He's the mm-hmm. number one guy. He's the star pupil. He's the mo- most faithful of Xavier's students. I, I think he's gone in different directions since I yeah, he, he's last had, read the book. But It's kind of like he takes, he kind of goes from this straight lace, like he was kind of more Captain America than Captain America when the book right. started. And he becomes kind of like, a, almost like a militant terrorist. I kind of think that's an interesting transformation, but he still kind of stays Cyclops. He's very like, he's very cut off from his emotions. It's very, uh-huh. I think that would, that would be the character I would, if I was going for like a leading man, tall leading man, I would cast that guy as Cyclops. And uh, Yeah. I mean, it, it is a little tough because you know, by definition, you have to keep the guy's eyes covered yeah. the entire time. So like, especially in a live action thing, you feel a little disconnected from him because mm-hmm. You can't you can't read his his thought balloons. Uh, <laughs> in yeah, comics, yeah. that's really a barrier. Um, but in a in a live action movie, I think it is. I remember uh, James Marsden talked about how some when he was like rehearsing certain scenes, Ryan Singer would be like, "Oh, that's great," and then he'd put his glasses on for the take, and it wouldn't seem as strong. Mm. And, but he was doing the same thing, to, but it it didn't read as strong because you just couldn't see his eyes. And that's I've just always. I've always felt in in the in these movies they've constantly regretted that's that they put Cyclops in them. They're always like trying to kind of push him aside in the movie. He dies as soon as part three starts. He gets captured as soon as part two starts. Yeah, and they're constantly yeah. like, "How do we get rid of Cyclops from this script?" And it's like, "Why, why did you even write him in this?" Yeah, yeah, he, he's 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 got he's had to put up with a lot over the years. Poor Cyclops. Yeah, I have one more theory. Then we'll get to the movie. This is my other theory, and I got this from Shang-Chi. I think eventually what they want to do, and I think this will also um, sidestep the creator problem, is stop taking from the comics. And what I mean by that is you could be like, hey, Marvel Studios is coming out with a film, uh, I don't know, Gator Face. I'm just making up a name. Sure. Like, hey, Gator Face isn't in the comics. I know it's our first all-new character. It's a whole new story. But if he's going to interact with the Avengers and Doctor Strange in the film, and then it's like, if he's being created by the studio, these characters, you don't have to worry about like, well, we didn't pay the creators. You don't have to worry about, because you can be like, well, trust us on Gatorface. We're Marvel Studios. We know what we're doing. Trust us. And if that movie becomes a hit, then they don't have to keep it. They can just create their own things. They don't, they don't have to rely on the comics anymore. I think wow. that's eventually where they're going. Um, maybe. I mean, I could, I could see them wanting to try that at some point. I don't. I don't think that would that should be like the new model of the future going forward because it's just it it seems silly to me like when you have yes. such a great basis with all these comics. I mean, you you literally have 50, 60 years worth of development already on these characters, and you can just cherry pick the best stuff. Oh, I agree. I agree. But I think that way they avoid the nerd rage. Because if you 
create a whole original. You're never going to avoid nerd rage. I know that's true. <laughs> nerds, nerds will always find something nerds, to get nerds, rage. Nerds about. will always rage. Yeah, they'll rage that they have to go see a movie called Gator Face. Or that's whatever. right. And it's like, oh, we have to see this though. No, you can't make Alpha Flight, but you make Gator Face. That's going to be <laughs> exactly. I don't know why I came up with the term Gator. There's no pleasing us. No. But speaking of no pleasing us, I'll tell you what didn't please me. This movie. <laughs> um, I got to say, I thought this was the worst one of all the Hammond films or anything Nicholas uh, Hammond has ever I would, I would agree. Yeah, spider Man's a Dragon Challenge. It's uh, it's a challenge to watch it. It's a that challenge. Was, yeah. That's the challenge. That's the, it, it really just does not engage your attention much at all. No, and, and there was a ton more Spider-Man action, but I got well, it. It didn't feel like it. It felt like, again, forever between Spider-Man bits. I don't know. I'll tell you like, what. Because the last one we watched, uh, Spider-Man Strikes Back, we at least see him like stopping a suicidal person at the very beginning. He, and this he, just just messes, out he just keeps in, messing up in this movie. Yeah, this one, he like it starts out in Hong Kong. We have some bits of business in Hong Kong. And then this person comes to the US and he's like J. Jonah Jameson's old college buddy. And J. Jonah Jameson is so friendly to the guy. He's so nice, J. Jonah. He's, he's so nice. Guy. It's not even the same character. I don't no, know. He's, Harry White's not even this friendly. He's not different. at all. He was, he was just like, you look so much younger than me. And you blah, blah, blah. And, and he's like, <laughs> buttering up friend. and it's sincere. And he's like, oh, well, I just run a newspaper. And, and like, and his friend goes like, oh, Jonah, you're too modest. And I'm like, J. Jonah Jameson is not modest. He no. builds himself up at the expense of others. Yeah. I, um, can I tell you the worst scene in the movie really quick? So if, if you if it's a scene with Ted Danson, I will punch you. No, that was the best scene. I that was, was like, the best scene. When he Ted showed Danson. up, like, oh, is Ted Danson going to be in this? Nope. He's but, no, stuff. Ted Danson is just in one scene. And it's he's so disappointing. And Peter Parker, I guess he writes articles now. Peter Parker did a profile, and yeah. the dance is like, "You're really good to me, so I'll give you the information you need." And then he vanishes. The best actor, yeah, the whole thing, yeah. And and I was doing some research. Apparently, this was like I think Ted Danson's third credited screen role, or something. I think Ted Danson should be in No Way Home. I yeah, think Ted Danson he, should be in most things, as far as I'm concerned. This yeah. is this is my story. After that, he became Captain America in the Hammond universe. He went. <laughs> And Ted Danson is now old man Cap. And when all hope is lost, Nicholas Hammond Spider-Man shows up. He goes, there was one guy that always had my back. And then Ted Danson comes in as Cap, goes Avengers Assemble. The whole place will go crazy. I would love that. That would be great. Let's get uh, Danson for Captain America. Let's get Danson that. Is, or Multiverse of Madness. He could show up in that as Captain America. He's Absolutely. Still, he's still I'm on board great. with you. You I'm see this order. movie, you see how long ago it was, and you see him now, you're like, you know what? This guy looks great. This guy, this guy is constantly worked and he's aged very well. Ted Dance. Yeah, yeah. He's a silver fox now, man. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I don't know. How's the good place? Did you watch that show? I, I jumped off the good place kind of early, and I've been thinking for a while I need to go back and watch, you know, now that the entire thing is done. Um, because I feel like I jumped off it a little too early. Cause I I know the, the people who loved it just re were really, really loving it. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta watch it. But uh, you know what show that sometimes on? Because I keep rewind TV, and it's not that good of a show, but he makes it good as Becker. Yeah, which lasted a surprisingly long time, mm -hmm. and he's good in that. And that show is probably like the worst thing he's ever done. It's like this guy's just good in everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's he's terrific in Fargo. If you haven't seen Fargo, oh, what season is he in Fargo? He's in the second season of Fargo. Oh well, then I gotta. He's just wow. He's he's like very under. I feel like when he dies everyone's going to realize like this man was amazing our entire life who doesn't like ted danson i ask you um well probably the black community in 1992 but that's a whole other story remember oh the, yeah okay remember the, remember I mean, that? even even that he he seems to because that happened in like kind of a pre-internet age and, yeah and he was dating whoopi goldberg back then so yeah yeah he, he somehow got out of it but yes but don't really look at i'm sure i'm sure the moment he dies someone's gonna be on twitter reminding us of that and being like yeah. Every time yeah. somebody, look, I'm not saying that like some people are assholes, but every time someone dies, there seems to be somebody on Twitter trying. Here's why that person was problematic. And yeah, and it's like the guy's fucking like someone. They, they someone started like, oh, Norm Macdonald hit on me on a comedy club. I'm like, all right, well he's dead. He's dead, so he can't hit on you anymore. So I, you win. Yeah. Like, yeah, I saw that, and you know when that stuff comes up, I I read it because you want to give it its its mm -hmm. due attention 
but you know, at the same time, yeah, you you do kind of wish that pe some people would pick their moments. I, you know, and I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's uh, I, look. I don't want to wade into that quagmire. Well, I'll just say, like, if someone really did something to hurt you, like, like something yeah. really bad, like murdered your family or something, I think you have the right to tweet f him. But if like, oh, they, yeah. they were rude to you, like, there's people. This comics that have been rude to me when they when they drop dead, some of them have been died. I just don't write anything. I just yeah. like, go about my day. Yeah, I'm not gonna go like their family is like in mourning. Like, you think like the family wants to go on Twitter and see me pooping on the guy? No, like. To them, that was their father, their son, their cousin, their brother, their uncle, their friend. They don't need, oh, he wasn't nice to me. Okay, great. We'll cry you, cry me a river. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so fucking, uh, okay. So the worst scene. All right, here we go. Spider-Man's yeah. on the subway, Court Street, which is by my house. Mm -hmm. he, so that was cool. So he's Queens guy, after all. He's on Court Street. And he's like trying to get something out of out of a train. And now they've established that he has this incredible spider sense. This entire right. he gets what he needs. He starts running down the subway tunnel, and they <laughs> shoot him. Yes. How did you not? Die? And he just falls down like a lump of crap. It's like, is this Spider Man or some drunk guy? Like, <laughs> was, yeah. And then, and then they they just leave him to be run over by the train. Mm -hmm. um, I did kind of like the stunt. You see, like Spider Man, he recovers and then he's he's like braced against the back of the the wall of the tunnel. That was okay. Yes. Well, I mean, that was kind of cool because it's you know again it's 1979, so you know they're doing this for real because CGI yeah. wasn't an option and it's obviously not a split screen or anything. So I'm like, that's cool that they actually had a stunt guy do that. But yeah, like again, Spider Man. I guess the Spider Man just didn't have any sort of super strength. Because he's oh. so often getting overpowered by these guys with normal strengths. Yeah, so I guess he just can walk on the wall, which he never does unless he's outside. Like right, and he I he guess that's all he can do, which is basically just a white rope. Yeah, uh, it's his webbing is not impressive looking. No. Um. um what? Would, why? I'm sorry, and I was I really was paying attention, and I I'm the host, so I should know this. But why were I, I was half paying attention? I was googling stuff during. A why were they of trying to kill the? Uh, so the whole thing is they're trying to kill this uh, Chinese man who was a friend of J. Jonah Jameson. Why were they trying to kill this guy again? Um, I don't know. Like ten minutes in, I was already lost oh on the plot. One because the the sound quality of the YouTube version we we're looking at not good. Very... If you know, and it seemed like everybody was whispering. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there were these three guys that they were after and the the chinese guy uh what was his name min lo chan had the goods on these guys and the bad guys trying to get him oh and by the way the opening scene we see our main bad guy and he's like wearing like he's wearing chinese robes and he's all dressed up and and i'm just like well well that would never fly today no it he's like getting painted by somebody in all these this chinese robes and he looks like he he looks like he's trying to play Fu Manchu or something. <laughs> and it's yeah. you know, it's like the whitest of white dudes. Oh yeah. Um, oh, well, what about the scene where Spider Man uh, 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 disguises himself as like a, a Chinese um, farmer with a with yeah. straw hat and everything? He's like, no, and then and then they're just like, yeah, I don't think you're Chinese. I'm like, I I, I got the sense they were trying to be racially sensitive and, and highlight Chinese culture. But yeah. like they didn't know how to do it back then, so they were just being incredibly racist the entire time. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's not aged well, and and yeah, they have the actual Chinese person say like, "Oh, if you keep your head down, no one will be able to tell." And Peter's like, "Yeah, that's what I was hoping." So, yeah, that's that's my goal. Like it, it was just like because they did do like they almost had like this. They paused the, the sh when they got to Hong Kong or were they mm -hmm. in Hong Kong or just, they were in some yeah, they were in Hong Kong. Okay, and they do this thing. They try to like educate you about the culture and, and yeah. the significance of a lot of things. Which I will give them credit for the old college try because nobody back then really paused an uh, action show in the seventies to try to educate people about other cultures. But yeah, they, it just seemed incredibly racist the entire time. I mean, and also it just kind of slows down the film. I mean, it, there's yeah. some nice scenery in there because they actually go to Hong Kong. Yeah, which was and, impressive. That no one was. You know, I'm impressed that they spent the money to send people overseas for this. Um. And you know, and it was fun to see uh, Rosalind Chow, who I know from from Mash and uh, uh, Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Yeah, she's kind of like the love interest in this, right? Episode. And she finds out he's Spider Man. He did look pretty. When, so he gets the one scene where they're operating on him. They take off the mask. And, yeah, he was pretty buff, Nicholas Hammond. Yeah, he was in he was in decent shape. Um, yeah, 
you know, like, again, the problem is like this Spider-Man, he hardly ever talks. And whenever he speaks, it's with Nicholas Hammond's voice. And it just sounds like it's a stuntman in the Spider-Man suit. And they just dubbed in Nicholas Hammond's voice. That's probably so I don't know. I don't know how much he actually spent in the suit, how much time he spent in the suit. I don't think he spent, you know, it's, I don't know if you saw, but uh, the Spider-Man crawl space last year did a reunion zoom with him and one of the girls on the show. And that oh, came really? up as soon as the movie was over. Kind of curious to watch that. See, he, oh, he, he's that also out. aged well. Yeah. Yeah. He, I, I remember seeing him in uh, uh, once upon a time in Hollywood and he's, he's aged very gracefully. Uh, he played uh, Sam Wanamaker in that movie. No. Oh yeah, that's right. He did. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, there was one moment uh, kind of early on, maybe like 20 minutes, half hour in where like, okay, there are these two henchmen who are running around and they're trying to kill these three guys that the bad guy is after because they know some dirt or something. I don't know. The plot doesn't really matter. No. But like at one point, the two henchmen, they're like staying in the same hotel room together. And one of them's just sort of lounged on the bed. Yes! It did. And his, yes! And his, his shirt's unbuttoned halfway down because it's the 70s. And I'm like... But it did... Ha- it did you just look they, like you're they, a couple now. They did look like a couple. I it thought was, that was kind of their 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 uh, motive and they were trying to sneak it past the censors that these two were together. I, maybe, but I, it looked it looked like it was unintentional. It didn't quite seem overt enough Okay. To me, to me. But, I think but, you can't be that overt back then because uh, they would they would tackle you and shut you down. I, you know, especially on a superhero show because I'm sure they considered that a kids show. Yeah, so I I think they they just did it quite enough so that people like us would get it. But like, I mean, I, I really do think very clever testing. coding. I don't what? know. I don't know. It. I to me, I was taking it as like, oh, it, it, this just is unintentional. But who mm. knows? Who knows? Yeah. Um. Yeah, it, it was it was just bad. It was boring. The plot was boring. I didn't care. Yeah. I didn't care about this poor old man. I didn't care about her. The action was horrible. It just really like showed that they had this was like apparently the last episode, too, by the way. Yeah, there there's one bit where where when they're in their Hong Kong and the the bad guys they kidnap this uh, character, Professor Dent, who's one of the three people they're after. Really the only one. I don't know the why they even brought the other two people into it. Yeah. Um, because they don't matter at all no um but the bad guys come in and they steal the they kidnap the professor away from peter and emily the girl he's with and then a a fight breaks out between the bad guys and the bodyguards and it becomes like this big kung fu fight and it just makes it look like everyone in in china knows kung fu Mm. and just all all these martial arts fights just spontaneously break out all the time well i mean i don't know i mean when i went to hong kong oh sure okay um <laughs> well so maybe that was completely accurate um but it's it's kind of hilarious because like peter he he dashes off to turn into spider-man and by the time he comes back as spider-man the fight is over yeah <laughs> that was kind of funny away. so spider-man gets into like a motorboat to to chase after them and it's it's kind of funny to see spider-man just going after the bad guys in a motorboat mm-hmm. um and then and then the bad guys they they're they're uh charging him in other in their boats from either side and spider-man escapes by like you know webbing up and going up onto a dock and i swear when he when he's jumping up i swear it, the picture paused for a second and i think it was like where they edited the commercial break but they it didn't edit it tight enough mm-hmm. i don't know i i found that very hilarious Oh yeah, there, there were so many like just moments where like this is am I really? It's just so so bad, so ridiculous. You know what this? Like, I mean, towards the end, he's he's climbing this high rise in mm. Hong Kong, and again, it's impressive because it's like a real person actually crawling up the building. Yeah. But then when he gets up toward the top, you can you can totally see the winch that he must have been attached to. <laughs> you know, and it's like wow, they didn't even try to disguise that it's just there you can't see the the cable that must have been attached to him but let me ask like, you a question um yeah i kind of feel like if you took spider-man out and put shang chi in you could kind of make this the pilot script for like a shang chi film because i don't know did you if if you took spider-man out and you put like jim rockford in this would <laughs> it would not change yeah i know in it's, any it's, substantial yeah. way yo you, you know you're right you, you or or well maybe not Colum- uh Columbo, because he- yeah, yeah, Columbo wasn't really an action show, but like if you put, you know, Manic uh, MacGyver, there, MacGyver, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> MacGyver might have done some more clever stuff. I mean, MacGyver might have saved the day. I mean, 
Yeah, there's there wasn't much that was that felt unique to Spider-Man. Like early on, he's fighting off some bad a bad guy, and Spider-Man just like pushes over some filing cabinets to to take him out. <laughs> and I'm just and I was like, that's Jim Rockford could have done that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not good. Not a good ending to the Hammond era. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the other two movies, uh, you know, they're not look, they're not the greatest things in the world. But no, there was just they, they have their problems, but they get they get substantially worse as they go. They do, and this was like really like it's just just not good. It's just not it's not not it's not Spider Man. It's not interesting. Yeah. It's not fun. It's I just by the end I was just like I'm really sick of Spider Man just fighting guys who do kung fu. Yeah, and not being the good. only idea it's, they had for him. I'll, I'll tell you what, if uh, Dr. Octopus or Green Goblin uh, from the or the 2000 movie showed up in this universe, he'd be dead in about four seconds. Oh, yeah. 100%. It would, I, I, so if uh, William Dafoe, Norman Osborn, if he wants to go to a universe, instead of going to MCU, just go to this universe, you'll, you'll literally become the king of the world. Because, right, right. And then, and then Ted Danson and Captain America will happen. Well, to be Ted Danson, yeah. See, now that would redeem the whole thing. Ted Danson <laughs> became Captain America. Yeah, I would this love that. That's why they needed us on set. Back then. Exactly. <laughs> Now, that would have been a much better show. Ted Danson <laughs> becomes Captain America and Spider-Man has to teach him, you know, has to train watch that show. <laughs> I'd watch. Yeah, that, that would have been a great, that would have, then no more, then no cheers. What, then you have to think, what would have been better for the world? Cheers or Ted Danson, Captain America show? I'm gonna I mean, no, it, Cheers 100% is better for the world. I mean, Cheers is one of the best things humanity has produced, in my opinion. So that yeah well the, also the free yeah and then you get phrase right cheers so that's exactly like, exactly that's and I, 22 I'll, I'll, years i'll plug old. i've got a buddy who does a podcast on cheers that i've oh. guest starred on a number of times it's called cheers cast it's hosted by my friend ryan daly check that out it's great does he do episode episode uh, by episode, episode by episode he's in the third season now oh awesome that that sounds like fun I, I, or, wait no i think he, he's in the fourth season now i take that back He's in the fourth season now, but I haven't guest started in a fourth season episode yet. So you know, I kind of um I kind of had this idea for a podcast because you know now there's there's podcasts where like the stars of the show will mm-hmm. go back and rewatch the show with yeah. someone who's just a fan. And I got like um Mark Paul Gossler's doing that in Saved by the Bell. And, oh, I didn't know he was doing that. That's funny. Yeah, the office. I think you got the idea from the office ladies. The office ladies are right. Like, and the guys from Scrubs are doing that. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I would love to do a show because I think. That, like nobody watches that nobody really liked like caroline the city or small wonder <laughs> with some of those actors because... you, you, you have to, it had to be like yeah one of those mediocre shows but still had a long run yes so like caroline i think caroline the city and small wonder would be perfect or um what's another or or charles in charge but like they everyone hates each other now in that show so just have one zoom zoom windows just yelling at each other and that's the podcast like you suck no you suck i don't even know why i did this show um i think that would be fun especially like someone who's kind of angry and bitter like i don't know i kind of be i think that would be a fun podcast because because it would just be i think people would i think there's more people into shows like small wonder carolina city that we really know about <laughs> there, I mean, there could be like this this hidden fan base for but yeah. i mean every episode of the podcast you'd just be like yeah this wasn't very good was it <laughs> yeah like i wasted my life i thought it changed my life instead i'm stuck here in a room with you but i mean look like a show like carol the city or small wonder for that they lasted for four years so somebody had to watch besides me somebody yeah. had to watch you know like caroline in the city that was one of those sitcoms that was on after like, Thursday uh, nights after friends no seinfeld that's why uh, after seinfeld. seinfeld okay okay yeah. and so i remember I'm convinced half of that show's ratings were probably just people who left the show on after Seinfeld. Because yeah, it was like I, between Seinfeld and ER. Yes. So, I, so it's like, well, do I turn off the TV and do something else for a half hour? Or do I just leave it on and putter about the house while Caroline in the city is still playing? Yeah. And, but also, yeah. Leah, you never, you always got to give credit to people like Leah Thompson. Uh, Thompson sorry. I mean, the, yeah. And nothing against the actors on that show. I think my, 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 uh, gripes with that show are more about the writing the writing, the writing. like it was about a cartoonist and i was i was going to uh cartooning school at the time that was on i was going to the joe hubert school uh then so oh, i was yeah, just like that's, okay that's i was funny. like no cartoonist has this much spare time yeah <laughs> <laughs> she never had to pull an all-nighter to do her strip you know what um, the thing the thing about um seinfeld in that show they basically gave those gave those people jobs so they could just be going around doing nothing all day you know, because exactly. like, they, I think people assume that when you work from home, you just do nothing. I, I mean, Seinfeld, 
I think they they realize like nobody really cares about these people's jobs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, well, no, no. The, the the thing about Seinfeld is, well, he works at night, so right. You know, he, they don't have him email. Well, there's no. Well, there, there was emails for a couple of years of Seinfeld. But they don't yeah. have him like, hey, these are my emails. That, you know, yeah. Like, he like, never called for spots. Yeah, he just kind of like, oh, I'll get spots when I get them. And he was just so, like, yeah, I'm doing the Tonight Show. <laughs> So he could kind of just be around for the other characters to go talk to because he's just sitting at home waiting for his like spot at eleven o'clock. Right. So right. Uh, I, I remember there there was like I think some teaser from Friends or something, and they were they were all sitting at Central Park and they were just like, you know, I don't think my boss at work likes me, and and everyone else was like, yeah, I get that feeling too, and it's like, why do you think that is? And and I think one of them I think was Chandler is just like, well, maybe because we're here at ten thirty a.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> I think that was in an episode. I think that was in a commercial. Yeah. Oh, maybe it was. I don't. I don't know. But I always thought that was a neat uh, joke of them poking fun at themselves. I. I. I yeah. Yeah. Some of the commercials. Uh, some of the promos they used to do because they used to film like specific scenes for promos, which they don't do. Uh-huh. Anymore, were actually pretty funny. Like they would have George interact with Jennifer Aniston and stuff, and that stuff's kind of lost to time. But like, I know they, they should put those on the DVD sets or something. They could. They should. And you know, it kind of. You kind of felt back then that the networks were a family. So like you kind of felt that like the cast of Friends and the cast of uh, Night Court and the cast of Quantum Leap all hang mm-hmm. out in some NBC like clubhouse because right, the, right. Pro- the promos gave that. So you kind of had a loyalty like, oh, I got to watch Quantum Leap and I got to watch Night Court and I got to watch Cheers because, you know, even though the shows were all owned by different entities. And I, that's something that the networks are kind of they don't really do anymore. Which I kind yeah, of- you don't. I don't think there's any such thing as network loyalty anymore. But when I was a kid, mm-hmm. yeah, NBC was totally my favorite network because it had all the yeah the, the shows and the sitcoms that I really loved, and it had like Dan and, it made, and, and, and they again they kind of like yeah they kind of made you feel that like you know uh, Scott Bakula's if that show doesn't exist on an island, Scott Bakula and and uh, Paul Reiser they hang out even though yeah. more people watch Mad About You than Quantum Leap, they're all equal, they're all buddies, they're all they're all like on the same team, which. And I really think they should bring that back. I think if net, one of the networks brought that back, I think that would be a huge success. Especially if they did like viral videos on Twitter and Instagram. That would be fun. I don't. I don't know if there are any individual shows that are big enough for that though anymore. You know. Uh, I guess you could do like on NBC. I'm just thinking. I don't watch these shows, but SVU and the, and The Voice. I don't know. Yeah. 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 I, I I was about to say. Do, do you remember like a number of years ago when they? Uh, when all the the NBC stars, I think this it was a Super Bowl commercial. They all did the Brotherhood of Man from. Yes, that is a very weird because Donald Trump. So a- bizarre because it's got like all the sitcoms they had at the time. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump is in because this is when The Apprentice was really big, and and you can see like you can see very various people who are like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Why am I doing this? Um, but also, like, so many people that basically went to war with trump years later or something. right right but i i remember like they show the cast of the current cast of svu mm-hmm. and you know like mariska hargaday's singing and like a couple of the people look very uncomfortable and ice t just like comes in at the end and gives just sort of a what the f look to the camera because yeah. well, you know that ice t didn't want to sing brotherhood of man but richard fucking belzer is throwing himself into it with gusto he is like singing and dancing and belzer is just committed to the bit and i love that about him i love that man well belzer when he was doing stand-up at caroline's uh he used to have a band and he would sing and perform he Uh really wanted to become kind of like a rock uh rock singer star but he was a comic he had a whole band and one time and i wasn't there for this um before i got there michael j fox played guitar for him and oh wow! They're playing guitar. He would always have like all all. So I met David Chase through him, uh, Clark Jones from Homicide: Life in the Street. Ah, uh, you know that show, right? Oh yeah, I'm a I'm a big big Homicide fan. Oh good, finally there's two of us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm joking, but uh, I met him through. Uh, his, I met I met the other guy too. Uh, the, the the guy who was Andre Bauer's partner, Kyle something. Oh, uh, uh, Kyle Secor. Yes. Oh, so Famous. a lot of yeah. Yes, they, they came and a lot of big names. I mean, I met I met that guy who passed away from Sex in the City through him, also through Mario Cantone. I met most of the people from Sex in the City, except for Sarah Jessica Parker. But yeah, when Cantone 
And when bells were there, it was like celebrities galore. Oh man, I would have loved to have been there for that. I mean, I've I've never seen Belzer do stand up live. I have I have his album Another Lone Nut, mm -hmm. um, and th and that actually starts out with like you know like a musical thing. He comes out and he's like, "Hey, I'm the Bells. You're the audience." And <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it's so. Um, I was in the middle of a homicide rewatch when uh, Clark Jones walked in, and I told him Clark Johnson. Time, I was how old was I? I had to be like 22, 23. And because that's when the DVDs came out, and he mm -hmm. looked so shocked that someone that like was my age was watching that show, but he seemed happy, like, "Oh, that's cool," you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a director now. He directs. Yeah, yeah. He directed uh, uh, the SWAT movie. I know he directed the pilot of The Shield. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Um, yeah. yeah, he was. That show is so good and so forgotten. Yeah, yeah. I, I love Homicide. So many, yes, yeah, so many great actors. Like, I'm glad Melissa Leo finally got her due, but, like, she was killing yes. it 30 years ago. Yeah. A few, a few months ago, uh, Reed Diamond, uh, Kellerman, actually followed me on Twitter, and I was like, yes, yes. Oh, cool. He was good on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He was on that show, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I enjoy seeing the actors pop up, and, like, Andre Brower, of course, went on to Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which just ended last week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it, it's so weird to me whenever I think, like, Andre Brower was on Brooklyn Nine-Nine for longer than he was on Homicide. That's yeah, that that's weird to me. <laughs> it's I mean he did a great job on both, but it's just it's still weird to me because he'll he'll always be Frank Pendleton in my mind. Yeah, me too. And, um and I, I have a friend who knows Andre Brower. He's uh I have a friend who's a uh tap dancer and he also works as a, a dance instructor and he taught both of uh Andre Brower's kids to how to tap dance. Oh, that's great. Well that yeah. Um yeah, that guy never I feel can I tell you if that guy showed up. If the 1992 Andre Brower showed up today, he would yeah. he'd be a Marvel hero. He'd either be the new Black Panther, or he'd be he'd be someone. He'd be Blue Marvel. I mean, there's still time, I guess. Yeah, somebody. Yeah. He but wasn't he, that Fantastic Four movie. He wasn't Rise of the Silver Surfer. I know, but he, he was like a bit. He was like one of those. Sir, I yeah. like superheroes. And yeah, what's this yeah. silver guy doing here? Let's operate on him. Like with, <laughs> I hate those characters. Like, oh, but, I don't I mean, believe he, in any he, of this. He's like, great in whatever he does. I mean, no, he does. But like, I was like, this is what you give him. Come on. This is Frank Pemberton. Give him, get, may, at least, can you make him the wizard or something? <laughs> give him something. Something. All right. We haven't talked about the Spider-Man movie in 20 minutes. Uh, it's garbage, guys. Don't watch it. There's, it's, it's not good. It's not good. That's all I could say. Watch like a YouTube compilation or something. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I know this is the Spider-Man season, but we talked a lot about comic books. It's just uh, yeah. not a very good movie. You're not going to. Hey, hey, No Way Home is going to be good, right? That looks good. Yeah, and next week, I'm going to have Keanu Thompson, who's not a comic book fan, but her favorite movie as a kid was the original Spider-Man. So it'll be interesting to have the um, the perspective of someone who doesn't read comics, who's not into Spider-Man, but loved this particular film. So, I see. So, that, so that's how it works. I, I pay my dues. I watch the three bad ones. <laughs> and, now, and now you're getting to the good ones. Yeah. You're getting to the good stuff. And you bring in other people. I get it. I get listen, it. Listen, listen. When I do Captain America and I got to do the, the 70s cap film. <laughs> I've never watched those all the way through. I don't I know. I bought the DVD with both of them on because I was like, let me just have this for my collection. And I've never, I put it on and I I, I just can't. But at the, you know what? I, I can't believe that they made these things. And it's just like, at this point, like, just call it Captain Duda. I don't know. Like, why? <laughs> I remember, I remember the one they made in like 1990 where uh, oh. Salinger's son, Matt Salinger, played Captain America. Oh, that's why and, he never wrote another book. He saw that. <laughs> that's, and that's uh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's That was a rough one. I remember being excited. They had the poster in the movie theater. I went to go see Back to the Future 2. And, and I walk out in this Captain America poster. And I'm like, because Batman had just come out the previous summer. I'm like, right. things are ramping up. i like, oh, this is awesome. I was eight years old. I was so pumped. Didn't come out. Then it came out on VHS, and I made yeah. my mom rent it. This was like in 91, right? I remember Marvel Age gave a huge push to the movie. Marvel Age did a whole yeah. thing. Did you ever read Marvel Age? The Occasionally, yeah. Yeah, and I got it home, and I'm like, this is the steal. I didn't have to go to the movies. I get to watch this at home. It's like, I'm the I think Kramer once said, it's like you're the world premiere, Jerry. <laughs> That's how I kind of felt. I was always felt like that. You're the world premiere when it's direct video. So, like, I put it on, and I was like, oh, God. Marvel, oh, God. Like, God. I remember like the big complaint 
was that Marvel could not get a good movie made to save its life. Oh, and, I remember that. Because like DC, they had the big budget movies like the Christopher Reeve Superman movies. And of course, Batman was the big hit of 1989. And then well into the 90s, Marvel, all of Marvel's movies were just laughable. Oh, I mean, just... the, first, the first Marvel character that made it to the big screen was Howard the Duck in 86. I saw that on my 14th birthday. And that's still like one of the most infamous Hollywood flops. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. It's just so many bad movies. And it was so funny because like Marvel comics were so good. It's like if only could... and then they did tap into it. So, yeah. And the rest is history. And now there's any yeah. old planet. Um, John, where can people find you on social media? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Trumbull Comic. That's T R U M B U L L and the word comic. Uh, you can also follow. Uh, me at uh, SNL Nerds Show on Twitter. That's uh, the the Twitter handle for my podcast, the SNL Nerds, where we talk all about Saturday Night Live and the new season's premiering on October fourth. So we're gearing oh, up for that. Time time mm-hmm. is flying. Time is. Flying. I know. I know. We went through the summer so damn quickly. Yeah, I hope they better. They better have a tribute to McConnell. They better do something. Um, I'm sure they'll do something. Yeah, they'll uh, they'll have Nicholas Hammond come out. You, there you go. Uh, what better uh, tribute could you have? They'll have they'll have Ted Danson as Captain America. Okay, they'll have Ted Danson dress up as Captain America as Norm Macdonald would have. I think we have solved a lot of problems with this cast. I just I just found out this week Norm Macdonald was a was a comic book fan. Oh, one, of his, one of his nieces uh, posted on Twitter and and mentioned that it would have been great if he got the voice of Spider Man in the next Spider Verse cartoon. Like make him give him. Um, I'm trying to think of a good Spider-Man to give him. Give him uh, maybe like I don't know House of M Spider-Man or something. I'm just uh, I'm gonna defeat this bad guy by shooting webs out of my anus. Sixties, the sixties cartoon Spider-Man, because that guy kind of had a deep voice. There you go. There you go. And and now he's kind of like have him be just like the super snarky Spider-Man. Yeah, because he's like a meme anyway now. The sixties Spider-Man. So, okay, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, we did the uh, if you're we did the other two Nicholas Hammond films previously. We got more in depth in those films, but they also are actually watchable. Um, Next week, Keanu Thompson shows up. We're going to talk about Spider-Man from 2002. Tony McGuire shows up. Things are about to get real in this season. Yeah. Also, if you... This is a Disney podcast. I did all the Disney animated films. John was here for Tarzan. I did all the Disney um, live-action remakes and the Pixar films. So please go to the archives for that. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Um, Goots is Disney Pod. And follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Ray Goots. The guys, thank you so much for being here. And John, thank you so much for being here the three weeks. I think we had a we had a good time. We had a lot of fun. We did have a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm gonna miss this. I'm not gonna miss watching the Nicholas Hammond Spider-Man movies, but I'm gonna miss this part of it. We're gonna listen. I'm going to uh, start a. I'm gonna start a, a Wonder Woman '70s rewatch podcast, and you are going to be the co-host. There we go. <laughs> We get to talk about. I wonder, I wonder how far I'd make it by business. Like, I mean, Linda Carter did jumpstart my puberty. So, well, I got to tell you, I, 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 so I'm doing an Arrowverse rewatch. I watch one episode a day of something. Right now, I'm up to Arrow. Mm-hmm. And last October, I watched uh, Wonder Woman, and I kind of half watched it. I like had it on the background just when I was doing stuff. But there were some scenes where they put Linda Carter in some outfits. I was like, this was one of the most gorgeous women on the planet. Like, yep. bar none, they they looked out. They really lucked out by finding her. There was some. There was a scene where she's at a sauna. She's in a bikini. I'm like, how? This is just a magnificent woman. So yeah, it would be much better rewatching this. By the way, did you notice it was only a gratuitous bikini scene in this? Yes, like towards the end, like they they, they, they just focus on this woman in a bikini. It's not a speaking part or anything. She's just no. there. And some and producer, <laughs> some producer had a fetish. And he didn't mind sharing and, it with us. And also, like, the theme song of this show, it is the most porn music ever. Oh, yeah. Well, most of the music in this show. That's why, like, I usually t- take a song from, from the show, from the movie that I'm wa- reviewing. Mm-hmm. But I just take covers of the, of the other Spider-Man themes because there's literally no music, no good music on this whatsoever. So. Oh, I don't know. You got that saxophone. In the- <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you, should, you should play it uh, at the end of this one because it's just hilarious. Maybe I'll do that. Yes. I'll believe you. John, thank you so much for being on the show. Guys, we'll see you next week. Thank you again, John. Thanks.